Hi guys, welcome to Pointy Not Sharp. Today we're going to be just discussing uh, sawback bayonets, uh, their history and uh, use throughout the First World War. So as you can see, a sawback bayonet is a bayonet that has a saw running down the spine. And it's a utilitarian saw that was used only for constructing field fortifications, clearing brush, uh, cutting small sticks, things like that. They weren't used for uh, creating, well, they could have been used for anything. They weren't designed to inflict nasty wounds on the enemy, despite what you might hear. Now, they trace their history back to 17th century Prussia, and well, all of Europe really in the 17th century. So back then, hunters would use hunting saws called uh, kateaus, and they were used for um, cutting uh, bone when dis uh, dismembering animals, as well as cutting wood and any kind of utilitarian role that a hunter's going to need a, a saw for. It's just handier to have it on your saw than carry a separate saw. Now, they saw their um, first military adoption by the Prussians as uh, fascine knives in uh, 1810. So they were issued to engineers, pioneers, and uh, foot artillery, as well as anyone else who will need them when the circumstances permit. And um, the Prussians used them for quite some time. They actually made two further models, the model of 1841 and the model of 1855. And they were deemed to be uh, a bit of a success, quite popular, and it was only natural that eventually they would um, start putting sawbacks on the back of bayonets, which they did. So the first known uh, bayonet with a sawback was the Prussian model of 1865. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to try and pronounce this word. I'll print it below. It begins with Pioneer, and uh, obviously they were issued to uh, Pioneers, Engineers, and Foot Artillery as well. Now, this bayonet has an absolutely massive 19-inch sawtooth blade, and it was made for the dry sea needle fire rifle. Now, I can't imagine how heavy or unwieldy this bayonet would have been on the end of a rifle, but I imagine it would have made a fantastic machete and a great handsaw. So um, other countries uh, followed suit and uh, started adopting uh, sawback bayonets shortly after as well. Uh, Belgium adopted the model of 1868 for their uh, Tursen rifle. Uh, the Swiss had their Vetterli bayonet, which is what we have here. Very much a beautiful sword with a nice big sawback. Uh, very elegant, very, uh, very much a Victorian era weapon. One of my favorites. Uh, the British adopted a number of sawbacks as well. So they started, they already had their model of 1856 bayonet uh, in production. And uh, further bayonets that were being made, they started putting sawbacks on the back of those. And uh, they also designed the Elko bayonet, which is essentially a giant heavy, front heavy machete <laughs> with a sawback on the end. But due to the uh, prohibitive uh, cost, they didn't make very many of these and only issued them in very, very small numbers. They're very scarce today and I don't think I'll ever get my hands on one, unfortunately. But they are absolutely gorgeous. They also made a couple of um, sawback sword bayonets uh, for the Martini Henry artillery carbine. And that's the pattern 1875 and the pattern 1879. I'm hoping to get my hands on one of those two by the end of the year, but I'll see how I go. Now, in uh, 1871, uh, Germany instituted what's been called the rule of three. Uh, sorry, the rule of six. Uh, and that is that 6% of all of their bayonets, regardless of what type they are, will have a sawback on it. And they sort of did this through from uh, 1871 until the end of the First World War. And uh, probably the most iconic of all the other uh, German bayonets uh, with a sawback is the 9805, uh, the Butcher Blade, as it's been um, widely colloquial, colloquially known as. So leading into World War I, uh, Germany was really the biggest user of sawbacks. A lot of other countries stopped using them. Switzerland was still using them, but not really anyone else. I imagine the countries that already had them had them in a reserve role. They weren't in a frontline role anymore. They weren't really deemed as necessary. But leading into the First World War, Germany was using the model 84 slash 98. That's a small knife bayonet, and they issued those to machine gun crews. And then they were using their two long bayonets, the model 98 and the model 9805. Again, 6% of all of these bayonets were sawbacks. 
So leading into the First World War, the German Empire High Command, they were really starting to question the necessity of having a sawback bayonet because they weren't really seeing a terrible lot of use and they were really an unnecessary expense. Uh, it was deemed that they did have one final function, which was kind of their saving grace, and that was to cut uh, wooden posts holding up barbed wire on the battlefield. However, in 1916, Britain and France uh, moved away from wooden posts and moved to metal posts for their barbed wire. And that was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back after that. Sawback bayonets were really out of favour and not really necessary at all anymore. Now, during the war, the Allies really stepped up their propaganda about sawback bayonets and they really tried to uh, make it out that uh, they were a war crime to use and they were used for uh, torture and dismemberment of uh, captured soldiers for cutting through their bones and causing unnecessary wounds. And they were also making the claim that they were in uh, breach of the Geneva Convention because they uh, caused unnecessary suffering, which uh, was never really disputed officially. So whether or not it's illegal is up for interpretation. Uh, that being said, though, uh, rumours that uh, if German soldiers were captured by the Allies spread like wildfire throughout uh, the German army and uh, German soldiers became very, very fearful that uh, if they were captured with a sawback, they would be executed. Um, of the 26 German brigades, only one has made any kind of report that a soldier was mistreated as a result of having a sawback. So uh, I don't know how accurate that was or how accurate records were kept back then but um it doesn't appear to have really been the case it appears to be a bit of a myth or only a rumor that said though german high command ordered the removal of all uh infantry pine uh, infantry sawback bayonets and they're all removed from service and taken and reissued to rear -ish soldiers that said though artillery and pioneers they still kept their sawback bayonets now, the rear -ish soldiers who received the infantry sawback bayonets, they didn't want them either. They'd heard the same rumours, and they kicked up a stink and tried to get rid of them themselves. In uh, 1917, though, uh, the order eventually came through to start removing the sawbacks from bayonets. So they would actually grind the sawback down until it was flat, and you'd have a bit of a recess. And you can actually find those bayonets pretty easily online. Like, there's one on eBay down here in Australia at the moment. This was done on the Model 9805s and the 84 slash 98s, but it was not done to the Model 98s because being a very thin blade, there was concerns that the blade would weaken too much and uh, lose too much of its structural integrity if they removed the saw back. So the Model 98s kept their saws. Um, as they were removing them, uh, High Command did uh, consult with the 26 brigades and all 26 made the recommendation that they immediately wanted the removal of all sawbacks uh, from their bayonets. So that's where the uh, the sawbacks sort of died. After that, uh, there was very limited use after the First World War. I mean, um, Switzerland was really the only user with their model of 1914, which is what we have here. Very similar blade to the uh, Vettelie here. And uh, the Model 1914 stayed in service all the way through to the Second World War. And even after, I think it was only the early 1950s that they were taken out of service. So very, very long service life. After that, though, that was kind of the end of sawback bayonets for a few years. However, in modern day, they have seen a bit of a resurgence. And um, an example of that is the uh, 6x4 bayonet, the uh, AKM. As you can see, it's more of a utilitarian knife than a long, elegant uh, sword bayonet, but the sawback came back as a utilitarian tool. <sighs> and there's plenty of examples on modern bayonets that have sawbacks. They're still being made to this day. Now, sawbacks themselves, the uh, the bayonets, <laughs> getting a Model 9805 with a sawback or a Model 98 with a sawback, uh, they are not cheap. They're very, very collectible. And unfortunately, you will be paying a premium if you want to get your hands on one. 
I've got a good mate who's been trying to get one for about six months and he still has not been successful. Uh, and he's willing to pay a very high price and he's uh, still struggling. Uh, that said though, I'll try to get my hands on a couple and uh, do some uh, videos. I'd love to get a Model 98 with a sawback um, or a Model uh, 71 with a sawback. That would be absolutely fantastic. Anyway guys, if I've made any um, mistakes or you know anything else about sawbacks that I've uh, not included today, please feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.